Hello students, welcome to the lecture on strategic role of MIS and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the customer relationship management, understand supply chain management, define enterprise resource planning ERP system, discuss on business process re-engineering BPR, define virtual company and agile enterprise, understand the total quality management and discuss on knowledge creating company. Let me first tell you what are the strategic role of MIS. By strategic we mean the long term far reaching role of IT system in an organization. Consequently each has needs for different types of IT systems. Two main ways of dividing up an organization are used hierarchical levels and functional areas. The types of information system required at the different levels within an organization and for different functional areas need to be considered. The MIS plays exactly the same role in the organization. The system ensures that an appropriate data is collected from the various sources, processed and sent further to all the needy destination. The system is expected to fulfill the information needs of an individual, a group of individuals, the management functionaries, the managers and the top management. The MIS satisfies the diverse needs through a variety of systems such as query systems, analysis systems, modeling system and decision support system. The MIS helps in strategic planning management control, operational control, and transaction processing. The MIS helps the top management in goal setting, strategic planning, and evolving the business plans and their implementation. Customer Relationship Management CRM that a company uses to handle customer interaction. One example of a common CRM strategy is the rewards card program offered by many supermarkets. The store gives its customer a free card that gives them access to special deals and discount when they swipe the card during checked out. But that card also tracks everything the customer buys and allows the store to create an extremely detailed customer profile based on his or her purchasing habits. Armed with that information, the store can then offer its customer targeted coupons and other programs that will motivate its customers to buy more products from their store. Many CRM software and or service packages exist to help companies manage the customer relationship process. In fact, salesmen tend to think of these computer programs as the be all and end all of CRM. But CRM has existed for much longer than the computer. In fact, it has been around in one form or another. For as long as people have been buying and selling, computers have greatly enhanced the customer relationship management process because the key to a good CRM is uncovering and storing information about customers. Customer relationship management is not only pure business but also etiate a strong personal bonding within people. Development of this type of bonding drives the business to new levels of success. Once this personal and emotional linkage is built, it is very easy for any organization to identify the actual needs of customer and help them to serve them in a better way. It is a belief that more the sophisticated strategies involved in implementing the customer relationship management, the more strong and fruitful is the business. Most of the organization have dedicated world-class tools for maintaining CRM system into their workplace. Looking at some broader perspectives given as follows, we can easily determine why a CRM system is always important for an organization. A CRM system consists of a historical view and analysis of all the acquired. A CRM contains each and every bit of details of a customer. This helps in focusing and concentrating on each and every customer separately. A CRM system is not only used to deal with the existing customer, but is also useful in acquiring new customers. The strongest expect of customer relationship management is that it is very cost effective. 
All the details in CRM system is kept centralized, which is available anytime on fingertips. Efficiently dealing with all the customers and providing them what they actually need increases the customer satisfaction. Let us discuss about Supply Chain Management, SCM. All business must add cost to goods and services depending on many factors. The raw materials are just one component. The goods for materials and packaging must be harvested or manufactured. These products must be boxed, wrapped and shipped to distribution centers where they must be moved, stored and displayed or sold. Each step of the process requires human involvement, so salaries must be paid and rents, utilities and insurance add to cost of goods. Supply chain excellence is a competitive differentiator across industries. Based on research from AMR on the top 25 supply chains in the world, we see that investment in these companies yielded an average return of 17.89% in 2007, compared with returns of 6.43% for the Dow Jones Industrial Average and 3.53 for the S&P 500. In other words, if making more money is in your interest, then supply chain management expertise really matters. Around the world, a growing number of companies have recognized the need to develop this expertise. However, companies face a giant obstacle to achieve this goal. There's a shortage of trained supply chain management professionals at all levels. This is a real problem. Some have even gone so far to call it a crisis. And while it is very real, it is not complicated. It is simply a matter of supply and demand for talent. The supply side of the equation is the number of experienced supply chain managers with the skills that companies are looking for. And unfortunately, it is low. The demand side represents the number of companies actively seeking supply chain managers with real world and proven skills. On this side of the equation, the demand is very high. In fact, due to a number of factors, the demand for these skilled employees keeps rising year after year after year. Because of these facts, recruiting and retaining supply chain managers with proven real-world skills is a top concern for most companies in 2012 and beyond. Currently, there are two primary options that companies have when trying to fill their pipeline. One, they can train people from within, or two, they can recruit talent from top universities around the world. This creates the second problem. Many of the skills needed to effectively manage a modern-day supply chain are only acquired by hands-on work with real supply chains solving real-world problems for real companies. They do not come from the classroom. Passing a test, receiving a credential, or even graduating from a top MBA program does not prove real-world skills that companies are requiring. So here's the question. How do we bridge the gap between companies' high demand for skilled supply chain managers and the future supply chain professional without the ability to acquire those skills. Everybody knows that the best way to learn something is by doing it. There is no substitution for the real thing. That is why landing an internship at a great company can go a long way for advancing your career. However, many times the risk is too high or it's just not cost effective to practice that skill in the real world. Take pilot training for example. Because of the high risks and high cost of flying an airplane, almost all of today's pilots are first trained using flight simulators. It doesn't matter if you're building skills to fly privately, commercially, or in the military, you will be spending a lot of time in the simulator. Why? Because it just works. So what if universities and companies could teach the real world skills needed to successfully manage complex global supply chains the same way that the airlines do? by simulating a real-life global supply chain in a virtual world? And what if we could at the same time make that simulation engaging, entertaining, and fun? By doing so, the student could learn real-world skills, solve real-world problems, get real experience, have zero risk of failure, have low or even no cost, and at the same time, actually have fun. That's great and all. But here's where the real magic happens. Let's take Caterpillar as an example. Caterpillar is obviously a real company. You may have heard of them. Caterpillar has a large global supply chain that allows them to manufacture and deliver heavy machinery around the world. Their supply chain is very complex and very real. But with that complexity comes very real problems for Caterpillar's supply chain managers. 
problems that in this case create the biggest opportunity of all. This is why we are going to simulate Caterpillar's full supply chain in a virtual 3D world using the latest video game technologies. Every warehouse, manufacturing plant, shipping route will be modeled in full 3D for users to interact with. Then we are going to apply a proven framework to this model in order to help users find and fix the smallest of problems. Finally, we are going to invite really smart MBA students from around the world to participate in the simulation. Students from qualifying university programs around the world will be given a chance of a lifetime to actually interact and learn from Caterpillar's global supply chain. They will solve real problems, learn valuable lessons, and most importantly, gain the skills needed to get hired by top companies. Finally, students will be able to learn by actually doing. But what may be the most valuable byproduct of all of this learning is what the sponsoring company will actually receive. First of all, they will for the first time ever be able to visualize their entire supply chain in a virtual 3D world. Second, they will receive a state-of-the-art training tool that they can then use to train current and future employees on how their very own supply chain actually works. Third, they will have access to a very large talent pool of skilled supply chain managers that they can hire. And best of all, they will be receiving a constant flow of innovative solutions to their most challenging supply chain problems as students and employees around the world are discovering the most effective ways to model their actual supply chain. Manufactured products require raw materials so the chain can extend even further and each step requires the same handling. All of these steps in the chain add expenses that must be covered in the final price. The chain follows the course of raw materials to final placement in consumer hands. Service-based business utilize equipment and personal and they have office overhead expenses that must be included in their final price. Someone must monitor and coordinate all the steps of the process for transforming goods into viable consumer products. Typical chains involve consumer retailers, transporters, wholesalers, manufacturers and the manufacturer suppliers of raw materials. Supply chain management seeks to improve efficiency in the process to reduce the cost of goods. Five steps facilitate getting products into consumer hands, planning, suppliers, production, distribution and returns. Managers seek to create more favorable conditions by identifying areas where greater efficiency can be introduced. Better prices help reduce overall costs, but shipping costs can also affect the bottom line. Delays in shipping goods carry hidden costs because workers must be paid whether they have the necessary materials or not. Waste might occur anywhere along the supply chain and efficient managers spend a great deal of time reducing and implementing waste. Multiple methods of shipping generate different benefits and disadvantages and these must be weighed as a function of effective management. For example, shipping a fully loaded truck cuts transportation costs. However, delays could cause loss of revenue while waiting for the truck to fill up. Or the full load might require an extraordinary effort to store the materials until needed. Inventory control plays a central role in management, requiring sufficient materials to produce products to meet customer demand without risking loss from carrying too many supplies. Coordinating the flow of inventory and goods defines management success by meeting production goals in a timely, affordable manner. Information technology often plays a key role. Strategic forecasts, marketing efforts and communication among partners require an effective exchange of ideas. Direct customer shipping can eliminate many of the costs of shipping, storing and marketing products. So many wholesale companies choose to pursue a strategy of selling directly to consumers to enhance the bottom line. An industry consultant introduced the term in the 1980s, but the practical consideration of managing resources have played a key role in manufacturing since the introduction of the assembly line. The information technology explosion 
and global marketing have created a more complex system requiring detailed analysis and monitoring to avoid major problems. The company plans to demand environmental responsibility from all partners in its supply chain. Decisions of major retailers can exert a considerable influence on companies that scramble to satisfy the giants or lost their stores as an outlet for products. Smaller companies might need to make economic sacrifices to implement similar strategies aimed at appeasing consumers. Supply and demand drive business and companies must balance consumer demands with economic realities for marketing success. Enterprise Resource Planning ERP System the information made available through an ERP system provides visibility for key performance indicators KPIs required for meeting corporate objectives. The ERP Enterprise Resource Planning is an industry term for the broad set of activities that helps a business manage the important parts of its business. Enterprise Resource Planning ERP software is a group of programs and functions integrating corporate accounting and resource management with production schedules and customer orders. ERP may not be a direct focus of operation and design engineers. However, ERP is one of the most critical technological shifts an organization can make. The resulting impact of the corporate information management system is profound such that the entire organization, even planned a floor process control, for example, must adapt to it. The term enterprise resource planning was coined to demonstrate the fact that these systems have evolved well beyond their origins as inventory, transaction and cost accounting systems. The software now acts as the means to support and expedite the entire order fulfillment process. ERP can also lead to business process re-engineering by removing barriers between functional departments and reducing duplication of effort. The system increases flexibility and responsiveness. The vision of ERP is evolving to include the extended enterprise. Extended ERP is an inter-enterprise vision that includes balancing and optimizing of not just the enterprise but the value network or the entire set of supply and demand business processes that drive the enterprise delivery of goods and services. ERP software application can be used to manage product planning, parts purchasing, inventories, interacting with suppliers, providing customer service and tracking orders. These systems allow the auto companies to manage their supply chains and enable true just-in-time delivery. They facilitate re-engineering and remove inefficiencies and redundancies in the network and they allow for electronic commerce. The vision of ERP is evolving to include the extended enterprise. Extended ERP is an inter-enterprise vision that includes balancing and optimization of not just the enterprise but the value network or the entire set of supply and demand business processes that drive the enterprise delivery of goods and services. A virtual company is a stimulated enterprise that is set up and run by its participants with support from an educator, facilitator and a real company, business partner. Virtual companies conduct business with other virtual companies in a stimulated market economy on a local, national or international basis. The virtual company educates all company employees with every aspect of business operation including marketing research, advertising, trade payment system, tax payment, lease contracts and effective utilization of banks. It will also help with the original drafting of the business plan and checked on the subsequent process once it is implemented. A virtual company is a stimulated enterprise that is set up and run by its participant with support from an educator, facilitator and a real company business partner. There are six steps to forming a virtual e-commerce operation. Develop a collaborative business model. We may want to offer only our own products but use external services to support other aspects of business such as accounting. Wait a while the technology is still 
at early stage of development. Think about using the extensible markup language XML as a means of exchanging basic information between companies, possibly as a stepping stone to more sophisticated component calling languages. Make sure that one has formal partnership with third-party service providers. Sort out the legal and financial issues before getting involved in the technical nati gritty. eSpeak are another option, but SOAP has stolen the show in terms of media coverage and potential market take-up. Make sure that software testing and service level agreements with partners' services are up to scratch, dealing with third-party, internet services and getting results in real time for web delivery is no mean feat. Now we discuss about a total quality management TQM. Is the optimization and integration of all the functions and processes of a business in order to provide for excited customers through a process of continuous improvement. Management choice of the 90s is more than a program. It is a commitment to a new way of life, personally, professionally and as a world citizen. Without that commitment, it becomes another management, fat and a waste of time and money. Objectives of TQM Process improvement, defect prevention, priority of effort, developing cause-effect relationship, measuring system capacity, developing improvement, checklists and check forms, helping teams make better decisions, developing operational definition, separating trivial from significant needs, observing behavior changes over a period of time. TQM revolves around commitment by senior management and all employees, effective strategy, vision, mission and goals, customer supplier relationship, communication, tools and techniques for improvement, teamwork. System to facilitate improvement and most of all, trust. The quality system should apply to and interact with all activities of the organization. It begins with the identification of requirements and ends with their satisfaction at every transaction interface. Quality system must be a practical working document. Look for a document that is well fingered in use, a useful guide in the operation of any process. Is no process without data collection, no data collection without analysis, no analysis without decision, no decision without action, which can include doing nothing. This discipline is built into any good quality system, primarily through the audit and review system. The overriding requirement is that the system must reflect the established practices. A systematic functional quality model like TQM should be genuinely explored and exploited. Continuous improvements are probably the most powerful concept to guide management through the achievements of TQM. Continuous improvements are based on systematic, incredible and habitual improvements of processes rather than on breakthroughs and innovative advances. The process concentrates on elimination of waste and non-value added activities to collective and continuous involvement of all employees. Now let's move on TQM tools. These are small groups of employees who work on solving specific problems related to quality and productivity, often with stated targets for improvement. Quality improvement teams are proving to be highly successful at tracking down the causes of poor quality as well as taking remedial action. This is the process of identifying the best practices and approaches by comparing productivity in specific areas within one's own company to other organizations, both within and outside the industry. This is a statistical technique that uses periodic random samples take it during actual production to determine whether acceptable quality levels are being met or whether production should be stopped in order to take remedial action. Because most processes produce some variation, statistical process control uses statistical tests to determine when variation fall outside a narrow range 
around the acceptable quality level. The emphasis when using SPC is on defect prevention rather than trying to inspect the quality into the product. In order for the eye on the future model to be a success, each member in an organization must be committed to the change process. It cannot be viewed as a new flavor of the month, but should rather be regarded as an exciting life-changing process. Too often people's enthusiasm wanes when they realize that the change process in an organization is not likely to occur overnight. People need to pledge their support to objectivity, analyzing their job functions and procedure and seeking new innovative ways to improve them. If necessary, inspirational speakers should be employed to enthuse staff to a new attitude of commitment. Once again, people are led by example. If it appears that management is not committed to the change process, this is the attitude the people will develop. However, if commitment is perceived to be the attitude of management, then the people are most likely to follow. Training must be a part of the organization's succession planning. In today's business environment, any training which is less than visionary will not help the organization meet its future goals and objectives. Training objectives must be supportive of the company's vision and mission. In order to identify training, the employees must be involved. System deficiencies including non-conformance reports, customer complaints and job performance appraisal will highlight the most urgent areas for development. Training programs must be devised and implemented to help bridge the gap identified previously. The results of the training must be evaluated to ensure that effective improvement has been achieved and that employees are competent to use the skills acquired. Management must promote the need for continuous training as it will facilitate the following. Employees will be more confident and motivated in their work, reduce staff turnover, reduce errors, improve productivity, improve the organization competitiveness. Training must help each individual in the organization to maintain a growing knowledge of their business environment. It must be implemented to each individual from the directors to the cleaners. Fast-moving, flexible and robust firm capable of rapid response to unexpected challenges, events and opportunities. Built on policies and processes that facilitate speed and change, it aims to achieve continuous competitive advantage in serving its customers. Agile enterprises use diffuse authority and flat organizational structure to speed up information flows among different departments and develop close trust-based relationship with their customers and suppliers. Mike Beadle emphasized on the following characteristic of a truly agile organization. Management pyramid is inverted, greater liberty and freedom to accomplish the tasks at hand, constant learning, knowledge creation and knowledge sharing, a more enjoyable and humane work environment, a hyper-productive cooperative work mode, emergent planning, architecture and requirements, new values that generate a cooperative culture, the quality of life. After completion of Agile Enterprise, we discuss about the knowledge creating company. In an economy where the only certainty is uncertainty, the one sure source of lasting competitive advantage is knowledge. When markets shift, technologies proliferate, competitors multiply, and products become obsolete almost overnight, successful companies are those that consistently create new knowledge disseminate it widely throughout the organization and quickly embody it in new technologies and products. These activities define the knowledge creating company whose sole business is continuous innovation and yet despite all the talk about brain power and intellectual capital, few managers grasp the true nature of the knowledge creating company let alone know how to manage it.
the reason they misunderstand what knowledge is and what companies must do to exploit it. Deeply ingrained in the tradition of Western management from Frederick Taylor to Herbert Simon is a view of the organization as a machine for information processing. According to this view, the only useful knowledge is formal and systematic hard data, codified procedures and universal principle. And the key matrix for measuring the value of new knowledge are similarly hard and quantifiable increase efficiency, lower cost, improved return on investment. But there is another way to think about knowledge and its role in business organization. It is found most commonly at highly successful Japanese competitors like Honda, Canon, Matsushita, Nex, Shop, and Kao. These companies have become famous for the ability to respond quickly to customers, create new markets, rapidly develop new products, and dominate emerging technologies. The secret of their success is the unique approach to managing the creation of new knowledge. The key to this process is personal commitment, the employee's sense of identity with the enterprise and its mission. Mobilizing the commitment and embodying Texit knowledge in actual technologies and products require managers who are as comfortable with images and symbols, slogans such as theory of automobile, evolution, analogies like that between a personal copier and a beer can, metaphors such as optical electronics as they are with hard numbers measuring market share, productivity or ROI. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The CRM is an acronym that stands for Customer Relationship Management. It describes a strategy that a company uses to handle customer interaction. Customer Relationship Management is the strongest and the most efficient approach in maintaining and creating relationship with customers. Supply Chain Management, SCM, is the control of the supply chain. The ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, is an industry term for the board set of activities. Business Processes Reengineering, BPR, is the analysis and redesign and workflow within and between enterprises.